we've reached this moment in history where our markets have completed these just ma massive profit targets. And I want to repeat this, that you are, you are part of the group that is in the know. You are part of the group that has knowledge of these, these events before they happen. And we had this type of information in, in 2007 going into 2008. Our markets had, um, had a failed breakout and we started a break in trend of longs and we had measured move shorts, we'll, which we'll review here in a moment. But from the 1932 lows, and this is the 1929 crash here, we fell inside of a series of measured move shorts. There was a series of measured move shorts inside of the 1929 crash, which bottomed out in 1932. In 1937, our markets traded their full 50% retracement and did not break out of that resistance level until 1951 at the end of World War II. It took a full 20 years to break out of that short setup and to really set this market up for a rally. And now we've created this, this incredible bubble, bond market bubble, the, the stock market bubble. And what is fascinating about our markets in 19, um, 1999 when we broke our trend and we had our seven-year cycle, which we'll talk about here in a moment, but first I want to go to this longer-term trend. We had a pullback into a halfway back long from 1932 lows to highs. And that support level bounced. We rallied out of our 2003 lows and we had a failed breakout in 2007 going into 2008. Now both of these are seven year cycles here and we're in another seven year cycle. But what I want to point out here in this longer term trend is that we went to and through our profit targets. And when we go through a target like this, we have an extension. And the extension is drawn from the previous highs of the last traditional measured move to our highs. Now that extension long level was front run. And you can see here, and the, the S&P 500 was also front run, we hit this profit target of the extension. And we have not gone through it. We've been up at it for two months. My concern is, is that we're going to look back on this, and of course it won't be with, the, be with the benefit of hindsight, because we've known that we're inside of this pattern for two full months. There's been plenty of time to prepare for any downside risk here going into the seven-year cycle. But there's a pullback now from our same anchor to new highs, which we'll talk about here in a moment, all the way down at the 1850s. So let's go to a little bit to more or a or smaller chart here. What where I'm simulating is the support level from that 1932 lows to highs, which we bounced off of very cleanly. And what I want to show you is, and you can go back to, you can go back to 1987, 1994. Every seven years we go through this cycle. And it is scary how technical it has been over the last uh, couple sessions. 1987 was a September and we had one of the biggest crashes at that time that the markets had ever seen. 1994 was a pullback. It was an extension long level from 1987's highs to highs. When we ran into 2000, we had extension long levels that were trading and then they failed. And then the May or the spring before 2001 or 9-11, the spring set us up inside of a 50% short, which hit its profit target on 9-11, almost as if the market knew what was going to happen that September. We fast forward another seven years, we're at our all-time highs again, and then in the spring again, seven years later, we have another break-in trend. At this time, it was a traditional measured move that had failed and then a new bearish setup. Lehman Brothers failed. Failed, and then we came into a full 50% retracement, and they sold it off of those levels. Almost as if the market knew beforehand the 2008 financial crash would, would happen here, going into September. And 
after 2009, and of course, we had our series of measured move shorts that led us down into those lows, the 50% to targets, the 50% retracement traded to its targets, the new 50% retracement from those highs to lows, defended their 61.8% lines, and hit their profit targets. What I want to point out here is that in most cases, the lows and the highs of the market are profit targets, not necessarily support or resistance levels. They're actually profit targets. So after we broke our series of measured moves, the market traded a series of traditional setups. Coming out of those previous lows to highs, we traded pullbacks in 2009, we traded pullbacks in 2010, we traded pullbacks in 2011, and then we started going straight up. The previous highs, as we talked about on that longer term time frame, the 2007 highs, the 158675s to our highs, created this extension. And we're going to drill down a little bit here and uh, talk about that setup that we had, or I was showing you in that longer term time frame. The extension long level, and this also goes ar along with our seasonal, or the seasonality of our markets. There are two patterns to pay attention to. One is the seven year cycle, which every seven years there's a profit taking market crush, financial crash, tech bubble, savings and loan debacle, whatever you want to call it. We don't know what the trigger will be right now. But what we know is that the lows in 2009 were the lows, the profit target of was the low of 2009. And right now we have a profit target that's the high of 2015. And our markets, even in, in, in some of the best case scenarios, say that we do defend our new extensions, have a 250 point drop here back down into the next support level. And my concern is, moving forward right now, is that our little double top here on top of a profit target will set us up in a very similar fashion that we had in May of 2008. And at this time, during our markets, and you can you can go back and look if you want. We have all those you know videos uh, replayed that you can you can replay. We were sitting inside of these resistance levels and confirming our daily short, and we did. We had a series of extensions that were broken. We validated the daily short. We had a new measured move short here coming out of the 1400s. I feel like this is a moment in time where we are put in a situation where we are literally repeating history seven years later. And um, I feel lucky and blessed enough to be able to have a platform here to warn people again, as I was able to do in 2008, to potential downside risk to our markets at this current time. Okay, Now, it doesn't mean that the markets are necessarily bearish yet, but they could turn bearish if we break our extensions. It, if we break our highs to highs, our 2007 highs to highs extensions, then our markets are literally in a free fall. That's a 10% slide as well, too. You know, think about this 2120s. What is a 10% decline? That's 220 points. We won't even have touched the new extension long level yet. By the time we have a 10% down into that new support level, that is a devastating event for the markets if we trade this new extension. Because for many, if we have a 10% slide and we don't rally the next day, the markets are in, in deep trouble. They're in deep trouble. So we don't know what the trigger is yet for trouble. There are so many, it's ridiculous. But we don't know what it actually is. And all we know at this moment in time here is that these profit targets have been hit and the market has been unable, unable to make it through them. Now, let's take us to our most recent, our current situation. We ran into these profit targets at the beginning of March. On Monday last week, we made a new high and at 10 o'clock, we had a profit target that was hit. That was the all time high, a profit target that we were able, the only thing that we could do at 10 o'clock was sell into it. This week was exactly the same. 
the only thing that we had to do at 10 o'clock on Monday, the only choice that we literally had, and we stayed above those at those levels for about 45 minutes, was to sell into the weekly profit target. Now we are at the beginning of May. We talk about the seasonality of the markets. Your long led ledger day, Labor Day, and then you take profit on Memorial Day. Now it isn't always a sell in May as a bearish situation, but it's normally a pullback. But what I can tell you is that the sells in May on the seventh year in the cycle have been devastating the beginning of devastating sell-offs. 2000s, once devastating sell-off. 2008s, devastating sell-off. 2015s, we have to pay attention to the pattern. And beyond our disbelief, trade what we see. So over the last two months, we've been talking about this profit target and the danger to the two longs inside of this pattern. And the next bullish setup is below us at the 1850, 375s below us here. Now let's go to our smaller time frames, our daily charts and then 15 minute charts and review what has happened here this week. On the long side, coming out of last week, we had a very technical measured move shorts coming out of last week. We had measured move shorts coming out of our Wednesday time frame. We had next measured moves coming out of Thursday. Profit targets were hit. Extensions broke and then there was the late day, the last 30 minutes of the day, we broke a short. And then all of the bulls come out of the woodwork and, and basically buy the high ticks. Without setups and with the target getting hit first, there's nothing, nowhere for them to go but get taken out of their longs. So coming into this week, we have a new break in trend. This was our little lie in the sand for the trading hours only longs for Monday and the very full 50% retracement short. It defended after hours. We made new lows, halfway back shorts traded again. That came out of our 9.30 time frame. A next measured move came out of 10.30, which hit its profit targets. You can make a case here for a next traditional setup inside of our series to its profit targets. You can see here that you can make a couple different cases for the afternoon, but our profit target is our low. The series, of course, and you can make a couple different cases here for the next setup in the series, an extension or another traditional, we're trailing our all the way halfway back short. And there is, of course, the possibility of coming into that full retracement going into the rest of the week. One thing to note here is that we did break the long from last week's lows to highs, so there would be nothing unusual about trading all the way back up into the 2150. The 2150. So what we have the potential for, guys, and I, and I don't want to be an alarmist, but with as much fuel that is in, inside of this market and with the profit targets that had been hit, if we come off of these highs and we break this extension, it is going to be a bloodbath. And the nearest support level beyond that extension is the halfway back long from our 2000s lows to highs. And that is all the way down at the 1390. The problem is, is that in 2000 and in 2008, when we started bearish setups, that the buyers that were buying the lows on the way down, picking bottoms on the way down, they literally fueled our pullbacks or the continuation of our sell-offs. And um, there's no way to confirm support if we break this extension. Who's to say that this market can't come into its full 50% retracement from 1932 lows to highs? It is a possibility. There'd be nothing unusual about that. What would happen in that type of scenario? First of all, it would shake out anyone that didn't know what was going on. But 1100 would be at a fantastic level to, uh, to buy a pullback in. There would be nothing unusual about that either. It would be exactly equivalent to the 2000 and 2009 pullback, yet again. So I just want everyone to know going forward here what they are up against and the possibilities moving forward for the spring going into the summer and into the fall of 2015. And with 2016 being an election year, I would suspect that any trouble that we might have would probably be over by the spring of 2016, if there was. 
and by the spring of 2016. And the reason I say that is because every spring after the seven-year cycle is over has been a fantastic time to be in a long 2001 crash, 9-11 complete its profit targets, the spring of 2003, uh, we rallied. 2008, the spring of 2009, we rallied. And of course, 2001, it did last a full, you know, 12 months later than we did in 2009. You know, it, here we are, bottoms again. Um, but we just need to plan a couple steps ahead here. And uh, one thing I also want to point out is that everything is selling off here first. The bond market is showing weakness. The indices are at profit targets. The dollar is selling off. We can go take a look at that here in a moment. And I'm going to res- going to finish this video looking at the dollar because the dollar is is showing us on the weekly charts here a gigantic 50% retracement short. We rallied on the markets, the Fed's news that they were going to raise rates in the spring of 2015. And here we are in the spring of 2015 and we have GDP that is negative without its corrections. We have all of our news, a, 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 a manipulated employment rate. Um, and what the dollar is showing us here is dollar sell-off, indice sell-off, bond sell-off, all at the same time. Everything going down. All at the same time. It's scary. So be aware, if you are exposed to the market in any way, shape, or form inside of longs, at this time, you know, going to 50% cash in the spring is what normal investors do so they can add back to long positions in the, on Labor Day of, 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 the, uh, of the fall of the next year. And uh, being just trading and having a normal profit-taking time of the year is a smart thing to do uh, for the indices here, given where we are inside of our trend. We haven't had profit-taking in the spring uh, since 2011. So it's going to be an interesting year, guys, and uh, you're literally witnessing history. I'd encourage you that if you uh, are watching this video um, to share it with someone that uh, you might think is interested or might be interested inside of this or in these price patterns and uh, what the future could hold moving forward. Thanks, guys.